Hi, and thanks so much for joining me today. I'm super excited about talking to you today about my two favorite things, travel and dogs. We have five beautiful dogs and we love to take them traveling with us. And traveling preparation can be stressful and you add your dogs to it and it's even more stressful, right? I've got some tips and tricks for you to make travel with dogs super simple and you're not gonna forget any of the necessities. So let's get started. One item that is super important when you're traveling and you don't want to forget it is dog food. And as you guys know, I make my own dog food. And for years, I made enough dog food to take on trips with us. Or if I had somebody watching the dogs for us, I would make enough food for them to have for the whole time we're gone, plus a week just in case something happens. But the last trip we took, we didn't have any hookups. And that means we didn't have sewer, we didn't have electric, we didn't have water. So when you add all those things to the mix, heating up my slowly cooked dog food, cleaning up after them, because I do wash their bowls on a daily basis, all of that just was harder when you didn't have a hookup. So I was on the hunt for a dog food that mimicked some of the things that I put in my dog food. And I found Dr. Marty's. And as you guys know, I do follow Dr. Judy Morgan. She has like a million Cavalier King Charles Spaniels and that's how I found her, but she's a holistic vet. She is good with this food. So I purchased this and I usually purchase it in three bag increments. And that way, three bags for me and I even write it on here because then I don't have to measure. So I take out my measuring scoop and I measure it on a little scale and that way I know exactly how much my dogs need and then I write it on here so that I know and then that gives me an idea of how many of these bags I need if we're going to go on a quick RV trip. Now if we're going to go on a longer RV trip I'm obviously going to need to order more of this but this is just something I wanted to remind you about. Don't forget the dog food and your supplements. I'll link everything below that I use, including this, including the supplements that I use. So the other thing you don't wanna forget are your supplements. And if you watch my dog food videos, they're very popular. I appreciate all of you that watch them. I do talk about the supplements that I give my dog. The first one, is the hip and joint supplement. My one oldest lab, she's 10, she's having some definite hip and joint pain. And so I use this four leaf rover hip and joint. It has the green lip muscle. It's really, really stinky. <laughs> it's a powder. This seems to be helping. It's got some really good ingredients. I like four leaf rover as a company in general. So try that. Canadent. It is a dental supplement. And hi, Molly. Molly always seems to get into the videos. She's like the star of the videos. But Canadent is a teeth supplement. So it goes directly on top of the food. And this is recommended by lots of different vets that I follow. I've been using this for probably six months at least, maybe a year. And I really like this product and that's for their dental because these little cuties have bad teeth, <laughs> just genetically. <laughs> and they all came to be with really, really bad teeth. So this is Molly. Molly just loves to be on someone's lap. This is her happiest. Next, I have my COQ10. And this is for the three Cavaliers because of their heart conditions. They all have mitral valve disease. They need a COQ10 and they need 200 milligrams per day. Then I've talked about this company in the past. I've been using this for probably a couple of years. It is Five Leaf Pet Botanicals. Five Leaf Pet Botanicals. They have a full heart supplement set and I used that for a long time, but now I'm down to using these two that I seem to like the best. There's a canine heart tonic and then this says Pet Protect. And so I switch off between these. So when I run out in this bottle, I use this bottle. That just gives them a couple of different things. So the Pet Protect is more for all of their organs. So it's got a liver, liver support, kidney support, things like that, as well as some of the same ingredients that are in the Canine Heart Tonic. So real big fan of this company. You really can only get it from their web, website. Again, that's Five Leaf Pet Botanicals. I will list everything in the description box below for you. So these are the supplements that I bring with me when we RV with the dogs. And that way they're getting their continued supplements. Sometimes if we're going on a very, very short trip, like a weekend trip, sometimes I won't bring their supplements. I would say I still bring the hip and joint because their hips and their joints always hurt, right? 
But some of the other ones, I think sometimes it's good to, like with me, I will stop my multivitamins and my supplements just for a little bit. So it gives my body a break, gives my liver a break. So if we go on a very short couple day trip, I'll leave their supplements behind, but otherwise I'm gonna bring them, especially because we're a little bit more active when we're RVing. And so we wanna make sure that our pets are getting all the things that they need, especially for these little hearts that maybe don't work so well. But I would say using this Pet Protect and this heart tonic, the canine heart tonic, that has really made a difference with my dogs. So my dogs all came to me with mitral valve disease. It hasn't progressed at all. And so they're now all six, seven, and eight. My vets are telling me that there's no increase in their mitral valve disease. And that's really nice. So some of the things that we're feeding and the supplements, it's nice when they actually work and the vets like keep doing what you're doing. So that's a good thing. So let's get on to the next thing that you need when you go traveling with your dogs. Right, Molly? She's my deaf dog, so she doesn't actually hear any of the things that I'm saying. <laughs> but she's cute, isn't she? Yeah, she's so cute. Welcome to my RV. My husband and I take our five dogs camping with us or RVing with us. And this is a 1999 Airstream. And we love to bring our dogs with us. It's one of the reasons we got an RV. And we've had five over the years. This is our latest one and we really enjoy this one. While we're here, I wanted to share with you some of the things that I bring with us when we go camping in the RV. And this would be things that you would want to bring whenever you travel with your dogs. So keep that in mind. This is not just for RV travel. This is for travel in general. And I'm going to bring you over to our counter. First, I wanted to mention what preventive measures you want to take. And that's really for the safety of your dogs. So we want to bring things like a flea and tick preventive. I spray this at our campsites. You can spray this if you're at a Airbnb and you have an outdoor area. You can spray this. This is a flea and tick pet and home. So you can spray this on your pets directly and you can also spray it on the area. So I generally spray it on the area when we first get to the campsite before we put our fencing out. And then I also spray this on our dogs if we're going to go for a hike or we're going to go for a walk in the forest or anywhere. Honestly, you want something all natural like a wonder side. All right. And another thing that you always want to have on hand because you don't know when you're going to need it or not would be things like a first aid kit for your dogs. And that's basically what this is. I took a few things out of it. I have a wound cream that I use. I have a an antiseptic spray that is good for the dog. I also have a couple bottles of dog shampoo just in case. I got these at a pet health seminar that I went to. It's from Four Legger and they gave some free samples. So I keep those in here in case the dogs get super dirty. I get nervous that I've seen a lot of ticks and I want to make sure I get them all. It's a lot easier when the dogs are wet for me to find them. And also I have a prescription pain product was prescribed by my vet only because a lot of the pain relievers that you could purchase online like through Amazon or, or things like that they really aren't good for the dogs. I tried one I think it was an Arnicare based pet pain relief and my littlest dog Molly who has a sensitivity to everything she had an allergic reaction to that so you just have to be really careful and so I talked with my vet and I said hey you know this is going to be something I'm going to use only an as needed basis if somebody pulls a muscle or my black lab he just tears around and he's getting older and doesn't want want to slow down so he can pull his leg or pull his back. This is just a pain reliever when you need it. That's another thing. We always find where the closest animal hospital is to our campsite. And I would do that if I was staying in a hotel or an Airbnb or a VRBO, whatever you do. I think it's important to know where the closest animal hospital is so you're not scrambling if there's ever an issue. Knock on wood, we haven't had an issue. Next on the list is, I think, as important, and that's being prepared with things like their harnesses and collars. We are not big fans of collars only because especially the small dogs have very fragile Agile necks. And so you just don't want to be constantly pulling on them with a leash on their neck. We put these on when we're in the truck, pulling the RV, trying to get somewhere because these can get a little bit hot for them. We, If we go on a walk, they all have their own harnesses. This is for our deaf dog, Molly. So it says deaf dog on it. And I tie one poop bag or sometimes two poop bags to each. And that way, it's easy to get to. So I don't have to be carrying around poop bags in my pocket. And then we also have a tag for each 
It says the dog's name and how to get a hold of us. So I think these are super important. And again, we have this on so that when we're driving with our truck, we can pop the dogs out of the truck, let them go potty, but we're not going on a long walk. We're going, you know, 500 feet to where the grass is. And then this, in case somebody got away, has our contact information on. So this is just a precaution. We normally have no collars on our dogs just for, again, a safety reason. We're a completely fenced in yard. Our dogs don't get out. And so we've decided not to put collars on them. They are all chipped. So if they were to get out, there's another way to get a hold of us. That's what we do with those. And obviously a leash for each dog. And so we have one of these for each of our dogs. We have one in the RV and then we have a set in the house. So if we're taking the dogs for a walk at home, we have them there and then we don't have to remember to bring that kind of stuff. So that's also something that we do is we kind of have duplicates and I know that can be an expense. So maybe that won't work for you. The other thing is you need to remember to have bowls. So we have a set of bowls, bowls for our big dogs, bowls for our small dogs. And then I wanted to show you this product that I absolutely love. It's a Hydro Peak water bowl. It's insulated and it's got little rubber pieces on the bottom. So in an RV, even though we're usually on a flat surface, we sometimes aren't, right? You get to a campsite and it's just not flat. If we're like kind of like this, it is just a nice big surface and it doesn't slide and then it keeps the water nice and cool for them. And I have an outdoor water bowl as well. So we keep one outside and one inside. And I'll show you that we are the enclosure that we create when we get to an RV site or if we were with an Airbnb, if we didn't have a fenced in area, we would do the same thing. And then next, if you look back here, but I have a huge dog mat and we've got several of these. We've got a couple of small ones. We've got a couple of large ones. You need beds because you want a place for your dogs to be comfortable too, right? So we don't want them to be feeling like they don't have a place. And so we have some large dog beds, some little dog beds, and then everybody has their little spot. We also have pet stairs and it, they're in the back, but we have a pet stair so they can get up to the couch and we have one in our bedroom where they can get up into our beds. So we are in the bedroom of the RV and I wanted to show you what some of the stairs look like that we've put in here to make this a safer trip for our dogs because they're used to having steps, the little dogs anyway, are used to having steps to get to where they want. And so we make sure they have them here. So let me turn the camera around. So as I mentioned, we are currently winterizing, so we don't have any bedding on our beds, but these are the stairs. So they climb up on the stairs, they get on this little platform here and then they can jump onto typically my bed. They, they all like to stay with me, all three little dogs. And then the big dogs typically stay in the other room. That's a dog, a dog mat on the floor so that they can be comfortable. They also sometimes get up on the couch. That is where they are. Another product that I've been using lately that I think is helpful, it's just another way to make sure that we're doing everything we can. This is called Tickless. It's an ultrasonic tick and flea repeller, and it's just a little charm that they wear on their harness or on their collars. It's supposed to repel the ticks. We did not have one problem with ticks this year, and we used this. I did use the Wonder Side, obviously, on our campsites and things like that, but I think this is helping. So I have one of these for each dog. They last a year once you open the box, so you'll have to repurchase them each year. They're not inexpensive, but anything we can do to keep those ticks and fleas off of our dogs makes me feel more comfortable, and I'm certain it's better for our dogs overall, right? So anything we we can do to make that a better situation. All right, back to some of our other ones. Another super important thing that you need to bring with you whenever you travel is proof of vaccination. Now, these little things are supposed to go on their collars. Because my dogs don't wear collars most of the time, I prefer to bring the sheets with it attached and it has all the information that they would need. I also bring all my other records as well. So all the vaccines that they've had, you know, I'm not a big vaccine person, but I do have vaccine records for my dogs and I bring them for all the dogs. So we have no issues. 
Now that we have everything we need preventatively, we need to make sure they're comfortable on their ride to our destination. And these are the three Cavaliers asleep in the back of the truck where I have a nice little bed for them that I created by buying some foam and covering it with some very comfy material measured it and made sure it went end to end so that they're completely comfy they have places to walk around and when we have the larger dogs with us that we still have plenty of room for them as well and lastly what we need is a comfy place for them to walk around when we get to our destination this is the fencing that we put around our campsite area and we make sure that they're safe in here not only from getting out but also from others getting in because our dogs are super friendly have no aggression and so sometimes if other dogs come up we want them to be safe and when we have our big dogs with us they are also not able to get over the fence and it protects again them from going outside of the fence and this encourages the dogs to have a place that they feel safe in and that they can go to the bathroom they we always designate a spot for them to lay down we have an indoor outdoor pad for them and we always have our extra water ball so lots of safety precautions and just ways to make their time on vacation as comfortable as ours. I hope you found this content helpful and I hope the next time you take your pets on a trip with you that this helps you determine what it is that you need to bring to make it a successful trip all the way around. If you would please click the like button if you enjoyed this content and also subscribe to my channel so you can view future videos which I create weekly. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.